Yesterday, the uh, the new rules were published. When will they go? First of all, what do they do, and when will they go into effect? Yeah, so what's recently published was our decision from December of 2017 to repeal the 2015 Obama-era Internet regulations. What's published in the Federal Register is the next legal step towards them becoming effective. They're not effective yet. It'll be another couple of weeks or months before they're actually effective. This is just the next legal step in that process. Weeks or months. So what happens in the meantime? Uh, nothing negative happens in the meantime. So right now, uh, we're still operating under the 2015 Obama era rules. And when those rules are eventually officially off the books, consumers are going to get continue to be protected. And this is one of the great things I think about our repeal. A lot of the public perception that's out there in the headlines is the FCC has eliminated the free and open internet. We've destroyed the internet. It, the truth couldn't be uh, farther from those headlines. The reality is when the FCC adopted these regulations in 2015, it stripped the Federal Trade Commission, which is our nation's premier consumer protection agency, of 100% of its authority to protect consumers with respect to broadband providers. So reversing that 2015 decision revests our Federal Trade Commission with authority. They are going to be fully empowered to take action if an ISP engages in any of this conduct that people are concerned about. Uh, if a vertically integrated ISP discriminates against conduct or if an ISP enters into an anti-competitive agreement uh, to act in a non-neutral way by blocking websites or blocking content, uh, all of that is going to be subject to the Federal Trade Commission's authority. So consumers are going to continue to be protected. What we are going to see on the good side, I think, is we're going to see an increase in investment in the broadband space because what we saw was this heavy-handed Title II regime that was imposed was depressing investment in this space. I want to follow up on that particular point of investment because many folks are, are curious as to how this administration will help to use these new, this new regulatory structure to lure potential investment. What steps are you guys currently taking uh, to, to lay the groundwork for that investment? Uh, and how, uh, how, if, how quickly do you think that luring that investment will be able to take place? Yeah, I think we're already seeing the fruits of our decision to reverse it. It's in terms of the signal that we sent to the market. I think we are already seeing a lot of investment. How so? Well, if you look just the numbers, the announcements about investments that providers are making, there's a second piece of this, too, that's actually unrelated to net neutrality, which is right now in this country, uh, our permitting process, our approval process when it comes to broadband infrastructure deployment is out of date. And on the wireless side, for instance, a lot of these permitting processes are designed for these relatively few macro cell, these big towers consumers are used to seeing. Yeah. The networks of the future are moving to smaller antennas that can fit on existing structures and be minimally intrusive. So. When we need to get thousands of these new smaller cells deployed for what we call 5G wireless, the next generation, that permitting process is broken. So right now we have a proceeding that will streamline the permitting approval process. And that's with, important. Yeah, with the permitting approval process, is that is that wrapped up in the president's infrastructure proposal? Is, or, or have you guys been involved at all in the, in the cyber side of the infrastructure proposal? Or would you view that as a separate process? I think we're all rowing in the same direction on this. If you look through the president's infrastructure proposal, one of the things that it does talk about uh, is having, uh, aid, whether it's the agencies or Congress, to streamline the deployment process for broadband infrastructure. So this idea, which we've been working on since April uh, of last year, that's when we teed up these ideas, ends up being very consistent with what we're seeing from the administration. Switching gears now, uh, obviously the, the deal being reviewed by the FCC and the Justice Department regarding Sinclair and Tribune, are you guys suggesting at all, or what's your reaction, I guess, number one, to this decision, and secondly, to folks who say you might need to lift the caps of media ownership? Yeah, a couple things. So as to the specific transaction, obviously we don't really sort of get into the details of that, but I will speak more broadly to this issue. When you look at our media regulations generally at the FCC, they have languished for decades. I mean, a lot of this goes back to the 1960s or the 1970s. So I think we need to uh, uh, revisit all of these regulations and see how can we get more investment in this space, more resources in this space. That's what we're undertaking at the commission right now. How do you think you do that? Last question. I think we're looking across boards. Everything from paperwork, filing requirements, it doesn't seem like much, but we require all these small broadcasters to submit reams and reams of redundant paperwork with the commission. So that's one small piece of it is freeing up those resources that can be put more into news gathering. And, uh, and there's a lot of other proposals we have teed up.